Hi, welcome to the second lecture on explainable AI <coughs> application and research. So as part of this course, we will look at the subdomain within AI called as explainable AI. And we will walk you through learning the explainable AI, assuming you are a complete beginner. So you don't have to know too much uh, about machine learning or too much about Python coding or linear algebra or anything like that. So we will start from almost the basics and we will show you how you can pick up a problem statement so that you can do a hands-on uh, research project and ultimately get it published. So that is what this course is about. In this module, we will be providing you an overview about explainable AI. And specifically in this particular lecture, we'll be introducing you to the idea behind explainable AI. So there are three pillars that resulted in the idea of explainable AI. First thing is that we all know, we are, we are all familiar with many AI machine learning models these days. Many of them are really accurate, but it's very difficult to for you to know what is happening behind them. So often people call these AI models as black box models. So one of the pillars um, beneath explainable AI as a concept is to have AI systems that are transparent. So we should be able to understand the steps and logic that an AI system takes to come to a decision, um, whether it's for, you know, deciding, making decisions in a self-driving car or a medical field or finance does not matter. So transparency. Second is interpretability. So let's say we are able to see, let's say the, the, you know, the AI model is transparent. We are able to see what are the parameters used in this AI model. So let's say we have a complex convolutional neural network that is used for, let's say an image classification task we might be able to print all the weights and biases used in this neural network. So it is transparent, but it does not mean it's interpretable. So a human should be able to understand the logic, not just see the logic, but also understand what is this uh, and, and interpret it. So there must be a global interpretability. What that, what that means is, let's say a model is trying to classify some patients into healthy and unhealthy category. And let's say we have the glucose, BMI, cholesterol, etc. these data about these patients. We should be able to say overall, the model depends too much on, uh, let's say blood cholesterol more than the age. Let's say that, let's say globally, we can make such a statement. Or let's say locally, we can make a statement like, if one particular patient was classified as unhealthy, we should be able to tell which factors of this patient resulted in making this patient classify as, say, unhealthy. So that is local interpretability. So ideally, AI models, if they have local and global interpretability, that's the second pillar behind explainable AI. And third is accountability. So if you are running a company and if you are employing an AI system for making predictions for the users of your software. So let's say you are running a digital uh, money lending company. And if a customer is adding their details in the in your website, in the in their profile dashboard, and let's say based on this, these details, you are making a decision whether you should grant a loan to this person or not. Now, this is an AI based system taking a decision that is affecting an individual in your business. So in such cases, these AI systems, there should be a way to make them responsible, to, to hold them responsible for the decision. You cannot say that decision decision was made <clears throat> due to unknown reasons. Uh, you cannot say that. And if a decision is made and if there are conflicts, there should be some accountability for these AI systems. So these transparency, interpretability and accountability are the pillars of explainable AI. And you can already imagine why it is very important to have explainable AI systems. So if you are in the medical field, uh, say you are a doctor and you have to maybe decide whether you want to quarantine a patient or not. So 
this may be dependent on several factors so the patient you will first collect the patient data you may have a machine learning model for predicting based on the data whether this patient has to be quarantined uh, for let's say two weeks or not and yes the model made this prediction and maybe based on your data you know that the model is 99 percentage accurate it still might not be good enough. I mean, quarantining is a low stakes decision. So it's probably okay to make a mistake there saying, okay, even this patient has to be quarantined, even if the patient is not really sick. That's okay. There is no nothing to lose in that decision. But let's say the decision is more about um, conducting a surgery. So a patient is suffering from some kind of tumor and based on whether the tumor is benign or malignant, you have to conduct a surgery and the surgery is a little bit risky. So, and if you, if, if you as a surgeon, you are relying on a machine learning model to decide whether the surgery has to be conducted or not, just having an accurate model is not enough. You also have to have something that explains the prediction of the model. So if a model for a particular patient predicts that, oh, this patient needs immediate surgery, there needs to be some explanation why for this particular patient surgery was prescribed by the machine learning model. And maybe then human humans can trust that, you know, the model more, even if it's very accurate. So accuracy is not what uh, here matters. What really matters is interpretability of those accurate results. Of course, you need accuracy. So for humans to trust the decisions made by AI, those decisions need to be, need to have some kind of explanation. So that's the motivation behind or the need for having these explainable AI systems. And another thing is about government regulations. Uh, so in this introductory lecture, I just want to make you understand why is this such a big deal um, so that you are convinced of the value of working on this topic, right? So it's not a random topic. It's actually something that is increasingly becoming important. So GDPR is general data protection regulation. It's uh, mostly there in European Union and GDPR has several compliance uh, terms and issues. So one of them is that companies who are using AI to process information about their customers or people within the European Union, they are required to ensure that this is, these systems can explain the, the reasoning behind the decisions. So about the lending example that I gave you. So if, if you are running this lending company out of Europe, and if you want to make the lending decision fast, um, you have to have an AI system. And um government regulation is one major thing which will cause you uh, a lot of headaches so whatever ai system you are using you have to have the ability to explain the decisions of this ai and more importantly it also will affect your profit so if you lend money to a high risk individual you are losing your money because they may they may default they may not be able to pay you back and if you decide not to lend your money to a to a person with high ability to repay you are you're losing out on your business. So you have to have accurate decisions and you have to have uh, explainable decisions. So let's look at a brief history of why we came to think about explainable AI in 1950s to 70s. There were rule based AI systems that were kind of um, explainable. So rule based meaning if else conditions. So uh, imagine you are building a chatbot where you, you create some kind of if else rules, a, a series of if else rules to uh, chat back to a human. So as a human, you can type something and that sentence is classified into something based on some if else rule and your chatbot gives a, a predetermined response. So these are uh, AI systems, the, the primitive versions of AI systems, which are inherently explainable because you know what is the rule behind the decision made by the AI. So an example of this is Elisa. Elisa was a, a very primitive chatbot uh, developed at MIT. I just want to show you uh, briefly the working of Elisa on, on their website. So let me go to that. So this is the Elisa um, chatbot. So I, I had done a bit of chatting with Elisa. Let me just clear it. So just have a look at this. So let's say, hi, Elisa. What is seven plus three? I'm just asking. So first of all, this is not a chatbot, which is meant for uh, giving responses for these questions. But look at look at what the chatbot is responding. Does that question interest you? Yes. So 
you see you can see that uh, it's asking me questions that are not really guiding me towards the response to uh, you know uh, that is not being guided towards the response to my original question uh, you see what it's asking so it's very funny so compared to chat gpt there is no comparison uh, like eliza is nowhere near chat gpt but this is one of the earliest systems and if you look at the op the logic behind the the rule base that resulted in this response from elisa or this response it's very easy to interpret that uh, but because of that i mean that inherent reason itself uh, shows you like the uh, elisa is not very accurate it's it's a it's a poor ai model but one of the early ones and then after that there were other better expert systems uh, rule based systems which could power so mycin uh, was developed at stanford and it it provided explanations for decisions it made in in blood diagnosis and uh, in in antibiotic treatment suggestions so these efforts not only made ai models it also made uh, these ai models much more transparent than before and then there was uh, a huge shift towards neural networks and uh, these neural networks became so popular because you know in machine learning neural networks are highly uh, accurate and they were called they are still being called black box models uh, black box models because uh, of their poor interpretability is very difficult to say what's happening behind neural networks so that is the reason why initially in early 2000s the first decade of 2000 there was a uh, development of several interpretability tools so some of these tools came later uh, its proper implementation the lime shap etc tools meaning they are algorithms for implementing explainable ai which we will be covering in this course but there was more interest <clears throat> because of the increasing awareness uh, of people calling ml uh, convolutional neural networks or similar neural network models as black box and people wanted to somehow make it into more like not a black box or at least interpret what is the results what are the results uh and uh, then there was huge funding by darpa so darpa is um uh defense um energy um, the us defense department's uh funding program and uh, they had an explainable ai program which which was aiming to improve the performance and transparency of uh ai models uh so you need both you need uh, good performance meaning good accuracy for these models and good transparency so currently that's the direction in which a major portion of ai research is going there are so many ai models that are highly accurate but there are not that many ai models which are interpretable so are there any ways in which you can make existing models interpretable or do we have to develop a completely brand new models uh, which are both interpretable and uh, accurate so this is the direction in the general direction in which um ai is heading in the most recent years and uh, in this plot i just want to show you a snapshot from the uh, latest google trends so this was taken uh, on april 29th 2024 and you can see that over last uh, 10 to 14 years uh, you can see that there is almost a nearly exponential increase in explain interest towards explainable ai and if you compare on google trends you can also compare this interest against other terms like so instead of looking at explainable ai alone you can compare the interest between explainable ai and let's say machine learning and you will see that uh you know there is significant considerable amount i mean of course you of course machine learning as a broader term has much more interest in google trends but you will see that explainable ai also has considerable amount of interest even when you compare it with A, a term like machine learning or neural networks so this is an increasing um this is a this is a field that is increasing in its importance and it's only this graph you can only expect it's it to grow even more rapidly in the coming years so conducting a study like learning the techniques in explainable ai and trying to implement it in a actual hands on project of some relevance and trying to publish your research in that is a very good thing you can do and that's what we will try to do in this course so now let's come back to this question of interpretability versus accuracy uh <clears throat> just have a look at this plot x axis shows accuracy y axis is about interpretability so models like 
linear regression model decision trees they have very high interpretability compared to other models but their accuracy is low uh, and models like neural networks they are very accurate you can classify or you can do many things using neural networks but they are poorly interpretable let's look at this in a little bit of detail what exactly do we mean by interpretability i uh, just want to give you a small example right so uh, we will look at linear regression we look at decision trees and neural networks so <clears throat> in linear regression let's say we have some data like this on x axis you have exercise minutes and y axis you have cholesterol level and in general you can see that as exercise minutes are increasing the cholesterol level is decreasing right so you can kind of fit a straight line through this although the data points are not exactly aligning in a straight line you can fit a straight line through this and this fitting processes through linear regression so you know depending on the data if these data points are not in a straight line it's very difficult to do linear regression so you can already assume or you can already imagine why linear reg regression may not be highly accurate it highly depends on the data points if the data points are not not you know spread across a in along a straight line of course it won't be accurate but let's look at what does interpretability mean here so once we fit a straight line like this this line is the model and these points are the data points right so here the the you know the machine learning model is the straight line it is still uh, the most primitive machine learning models probably but it is still you can still call it as an ml model so here we have three classes cholesterol level high medium or low and you can also clearly see um, what is the where you can draw the boundary between uh let's say low and medium so if the y axis value is somewhere here that's the boundary between low and medium if the y axis value is somewhere here that's the boundary between high and medium right now let's look at this model alone so now after fitting the model the using linear regression we have we have the line and for for a new data point so let's say this is a new data point for somebody's uh, for some random unknown person this person has exercised this much and we want to predict how much is the cholesterol level of this person it's very easy you can uh, look at the corresponding y value which fa uh, falls on the on this straight line so using this we know that you know this person will have this much cholesterol and we will also we can also easily um you know the the linear regression model will also predict that this person has medium level of cholesterol and we can easily see why because the the y axis value is between the boundary point uh, or the boundary region uh, between high cholesterol and medium cholesterol and the boundary between medium cholesterol and low cholesterol so if if the y axis point was here so let's say this black point was somewhere here then the y axis point would have been here so and then this person would have had high cholesterol if the x axis was somewhere here then the y axis would have been here so then this person would have had low cholesterol so uh, it's very easy to interpret what this model is predicting so this is the let me just go back so this is the prediction made by the model model is the straight line this is the prediction made by the model and it's very easy to see uh, why this prediction was made and why it belongs to let's say medium cholesterol category so this is why this is why we say linear regression models are uh, highly uh, interpretable but not necessarily accurate uh, let let's see an example where a linear regression may not be accurate so in this case we have um, uh, on x axis body mass index bmi and you have two values on y axis 0 or 1 so 1 meaning healthy and 0 meaning uh, not healthy So if BMI is too low then you are underweight if BMI is too high you are overweight and if there is an optimum level of BMI in certain range maybe 18.5 to 25 something like that uh you are generally healthy so now imagine you want to fit a straight line through this if the straight line looks like this then it cannot accurately predict these people because it's not at all passing through these points or if you fit a straight line like this it this line also cannot predict for these people right because because this straight line is not passing through these points so this is what we mean by the li uh, linear regression model being highly interpretable but but not too accurate and even if uh, we have non linear regression there might be other data points which does not provide good accuracy uh, like 
different data for which even non-linear regression may not provide good accuracy. So uh, that's a general idea here. Now let's look at another example, decision tree. So we are looking at three, right? We are looking at uh, linear regression, decision tree and neural network. So in this decision tree, um, it, this is about how to how a loan providing company can decide if a person should be approved of loan loan or denied of the loan. And this is a simple version. So if the age is greater than 35, uh, then if the number of kids this person has is less than three, then loan is approved. Otherwise, loan is not approved. And if age is not greater than 35, then you look at the person's salary. If salary is greater than $3,000, then loan is approved. Otherwise, loan is denied. So this is the uh, this is the idea behind uh, this decision tree. But but often, you know, uh, these conditions which the decision tree has at different levels, we don't know. We just run the, let's say, the decision tree model and the model optimizes these parameters such that the accuracy of Classific classifying a person to to be approved of loan or denied of loan is is the best. The accuracy is maximum. So that's what decision tree does. So, but here you are directly able to look at the the uh, conditions which are leading to these classifications. Now let's look at uh, a person named Thomas. Thomas is of age thirty two. Salary is two thousand eight hundred dollars, and he has two kids. And if we run this data point and let's say the data point of Thomas was not there in in the in the process of optimizing the parameters in the decision tree, then uh, let's say that uh, he was denied of loan. Then so this is the decision made by the decision tree, right? Decision tree decided that Thomas should be denied of loan. And, you know, even if the decision tree is we know that decision tree is very highly accurate, we still can. Uh, or, or let's say we know about the accuracy percentage of decision tree. So uh, we kind of we kind of know that this was a good decision made by the decision tree. But we still want to explain to Thomas the reason behind, oh, why was this decision made in the first place? Then all we need to do is look at the decision tree. So here we can see that Thomas uh, had age 32. So age is less than th uh, 35. So it is in this branch. Then salary is greater than 3000. Uh, no, salary is less than 2000. Uh, 3, it's 2800. That's why the loan was denied. So you can explain to the this particular person why his loan application was denied. Uh, I mean, this is, of course, as you can obviously figure out, this is the oversimplified version of a decision tree. No decision tree is as simple as this. But I hope this gives you a fairly good idea about how it works. Uh, but let's say Thomas was age 36. Then uh, he will be in this branch. And if kids are less than and then salary is not in the question. Probably it's, it makes sense because as you uh, grow older, your salary generally increases. You have promotions, you, you earn more. And then what you look at is the number of kids probably because the more kids you have, the more spending you have, the ability for you to repay the loan might be less. Maybe, you know, some logic. So then his kids matter. So he has two kids. So if he was older, then his salary is not coming into the question. Then his, his loan would have been approved. So this is how you can really explain this decision made by the decision tree right now let's come to the neural network so this is a highly interpretable model but it may not be very highly accurate decision trees are not necessarily always very accurate uh, but they are very very highly interpretable as you can clearly see here and uh, let's look at neural network um, let's take a, an example of uh, brain tumor detection so you have mri, MRI or uh, x-ray images of brain and let's say you have this image. You can see a bunch of features here. There is something here. There is something here. There are some things on this boundary. And let's say the neural network predicts that a tumor is detected in this image. You may be an expert. You may not be an expert. But it might be difficult for you to tell exactly which portion in this image contributed to the neural network predicting that there is a tumor, whether it's something like this, whether it's this or whether it's some issue here, it's very difficult for someone to say. And the accuracy of this neural network model may be 99.5. You will know that during the training and testing, after the training and after the testing, you will know what is the accuracy that your model has. So to a great extent, you can, if the model is predicting for a new patient whose brain scan looks like this, 
if the model predicts that there is a tumor detected then uh you can really believe in the accuracy of the model uh because you you know that from your training and testing but still to let's say you are a surgeon you are a neurosurgeon and you want to make a decision okay surgery has to be conducted immediately and if you are going to rely on this model you just having a highly accurate model is not enough you also need to be able to interpret these models and now how does the neural network looks like it looks like a collection of lot of numbers right there are weights there are biases don't worry if you fully don't understand these terms but vaguely understand that just like how human brain has neurons uh, and connections between them these nodes these individual points these are all nodes which are equivalent to neurons and how connections form between two different neurons you have weights and you have biases so ultimately this is a very complex mathematical function which maps from this image converted into numbers by using the rgb notation and then uh, that that image which is represented in the form of numbers is ultimately converted into maybe you know uh, output is 1 if tumor is detected and output is 0 if tumor is not detected something like this so this is highly accurate but it's very hard for you to say uh by looking at these numbers these set of numbers oh this this was the reason why uh model predicted that this patient has tumor it's it's impossible for you to say so this is exactly where we need uh explainable ai because this is an amazing human model maybe the accuracy is 99.5% but it's not easy to interpret so the uh, the vision of explainable ai as a field a sub domain within machine learning is to have models which are in this in this quadrant so uh, here you can identify a quadrant in this plot where interpretability is high and accuracy is low here you can identify another quadrant where accuracy is high but interpretability is low and the north star vision uh, of explainable ai is to have uh, models which are belonging into this this quadrant of the graph uh, something which high interpretability and high accuracy so <clears throat> if you really look at where are these uh, let's say you build a highly interpretable and highly explainable model where is it applied there are um, applications in medical field let's say you are prescribing some treatment or surgery or something else to a patient you need to produce reasons uh, to the patient if you are relying on an ai model and increasingly in the years to come more and more ai models will be will be deployed in the medical field and you have to have interpretable uh, models in uh, transportation let's say you are in a self driving car would you trust if the self driving car is run by a black box highly accurate black bo- black box model if you are traveling in india um would you trust going in a self driving car on a highway um probably not because you want to know how the model uh, you know the the vision system in the car is seeing the road and traffic around you compared to how you are seeing it so that you want to know that you have to have some certainty that model is not looking at the wrong things to make its predictions and uh, let's say you are running the a finance company or lending company and you want to have efficient lend- efficient fair lending so maybe you might look at credit score you might look at several other parameters but uh, ultimately you have to have not just highly accurate ai model you also want to want interpretable model because of the compliance related things which i mentioned the gdpr compliance and uh, in law enforcement let's say let's say a criminal justice system is using an ai model uh, for detecting let's say crime or or for for decide, deciding what to do in a particular case of course you have to have explainable uh, explainability and uh, in banking system let's say you are using your credit card and suddenly when you swipe your card or when you use it for a transaction your bank is using an ai system to block this particular block your card because they detected fraud using their ai, AI system ideally if if they are using an ai system they are liable to explain to you why this particular transaction was uh, detected as fraud or or marked as fraud uh, the same thing actually happened to me personally so when i was uh, doing my phd in the us and uh, i was trying to book a flight from india to the us uh, using qatar airlines and uh, i think the the payment system or server or whatever of qatar airlines was situated outside the us so i was using a bank of america's card and when i tried to make the payment uh, my card got blocked 
uh, same thing happened when i was traveling for a conference in italy the card got blocked so certain transactions it was detecting as fraud based on some algorithm and then i had to call the bank uh, to tell let them know that this was not a fraudulent transaction i was i myself was trying to transact uh, my card is not stolen or anything and then they will unblock it so um but but you know it's important as a bank for them to explain to the customer the reason why this particular transaction was flagged as a potentially fraud transaction right so there are many applications in explainable ai in this course we will continue to teach you starting from the next lecture um the different ways in which explainable ai is implemented um how to build your own simple explain x ai models and uh, how to identify relatively easy low hanging fruit kind of problem statements for you to conduct a research on it and ultimately trying to publish that uh, research in journals or in conferences so that's the end goal of this course so i invite you to follow along with me in the course and uh, let's try to get something tangible out of this so uh, whether you are a beginner or not a beginner whether you are already familiar with explainable ai techniques or not don't worry uh, we'll be covering everything in a slow and easy to understand manner assuming that uh, like we will not make assumptions that you know some things already and these are some of the papers that we have referred to uh, we'll be posting the links in the description and uh, so hopefully you understood some things about the motivation behind selecting this topic for working on a hands on project and uh, as we as we progress in the next few lectures uh, the topics might become a little bit more complex but still as you follow along the course you will you will slowly learn the basic concepts and you will learn how to implement this so see you in the next lecture um thank you so much